Hello, it's Carla from Scrap and Create. We are going to be starting on panel two. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to be creating. So we have this little flap that opens up and another flap that opens up. And then we have these two little flips that open with um, a string circle closure. And then this will we have a diagonal pocket here. This is held by a magnetic closure. So I got to remember those magnets. This is going to open up. We have a little ribbon so we know to pull this up. This opens up. We have this place for photos. And we have this spread here. This has another ribbon so we open this up. We have this area here with a little, oops, my computer just went off, with a little tuck spot here. And we have this little ribbon, so we open this up and we have this space here. And then this is going to be our center where we have a little tuck spot down here and then this is going to be our back pocket where we have a, a booklet that's going to be fitting in here. So lots of flips on this one. So let's get started. So you are going to start with a piece of craft cardstock. Remember, I'm using different colors of paper. Everything is in craft, craft card stock. I'm using different colors um, just so it will show up a little bit better for you. You are going to cut a piece that is 12 inches wide by seven and a half inches tall. So that's what we're going to start with. Now for my back pocket I used 85 pound craft card stock because everything is resting on this, 65 pound is probably just fine. But I had 80, 85 um, card stock in the 12 by 12, so that's what I used. So 12 inches wide, seven and a half inches tall. You're going to put it in your score, and you're going to score it one inch, and then 11 inches over here, which is basically, you're gonna have these one inch wings on each side. Now, before you start, okay. So here's the, pa the paper, you just had the one inch um, score marks, turn it and burnish it, turn these, fold them, burnish them. Before you start, because we're gonna be building on this back pocket, be sure it fits in your folio. Um, everyone may build this, these a little bit different. Your gussets may be a little bit different. And if it's too tight, it's not gonna work. So this one, I just tested it on this and it's a little too tight. If I have it clear here, which it clears fine, but on this side, it doesn't clear. So I'm going to have to um, pull this in like 1 16th of an inch, or I might just do one of these 1 and 1 8th. One of them do 1 and 1, one inch and 1 and 1 8th. The main thing is you want to make sure that yours fits because if it doesn't fit and you built, spent all that time building it, you are going to be very upset. How do I know? Because the one I finished building with you guys, uh, when I put it in here, it, it was too tight. It was too tight. It doesn't quite fit in here. It's 
it's too tight. Yet it was the same measurements I used for the one, um, my original. I must have made this a little bit different. I must have cut it a little bit different, but it's off by one eighth of an inch. So like I said, before you start building all of this, make sure this back panel, which is what you're building everything on, fits. Very, very important. So, um, yeah, just wanted to insert this video so you guys don't have that problem that I just discovered with this one that I am sh going to be showing you how to build. So you got your one inch flaps on each side. You're going to fold and burnish those. And then you're going to get your envelope punch. Again, if you do not have an envelope punch, just find the center and you can use a circle punch um, instead. But what you're going to do if you have an envelope punch, you're going to open up the wings and you are going to align where you have this fold line at one and three quarters. Let's see if I can, can't see one and three quarters right there. So this this fold line is at one and three quarters, right there. It's hard for me to see, one and three quarters. Punch, same thing, turn around, get this square mark lined up with one and three quarters, right there. And then you're going to get your cutting mat. And you are just going to cut this part off. So there you have your back opening for your pocket. So now we are going to create a flap that we're going to be attaching to that back pocket that we just made. You are going to cut a piece seven and a half inches tall by nine and a half inches wide. You're going to put it in your scoreboard with the nine and a half inch side up and you are going to score it at at eight and three quarters eight and three quarters and you are going to fold that fold and burnish get this out of the way Now, I, instead of a half an inch flap for attachment, I'm just making it three quarters of an inch. So this is a th three quarter of an inch little flap here because I just want it more surface area um, just to give this flap extra strength as it's moving. So this is going to be applied to your, here's your back pocket. There's your one inch flaps right here. And then you fold those over and then you are going to make a line. This is a half an inch from the edge. Once the flap is flipped over, it's a half an inch. Or you can just measure out one and a half inches and put a line here. But I like to fold it over, draw my half an inch line with my quilter's ruler. Just draw it straight down. And this is where you're going to be attaching this flap, like this. Now, since that is um, oops, three quarters of an inch flap, it's going to 
kind of interfere with this envelope punch that we did. So go ahead and just miter the corner up here. Doesn't really matter down here, but you can miter the corners. So I'm going to miter those corners. Then you can go ahead and put your score tape down and pull it and then you will have this flap here and it will be out of the, the way of this um, mitered, of this envelope punch right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a piece of paper so you can see that. So what, here is your flap, it's gonna be down here. So you're going to be applying some designer paper back here and you wanna make sure this is out of the way. I may miter that just a little bit more too. I'm gonna to be applying paper here, but I don't want this to be showing. So I'm gonna do a little deeper miter on here just so I have plenty of clearance for my designer paper that's going on the top of this and this. I just don't want this showing. So that's what you're going to be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my score tape and put this flap down. Like that. So now we're going to do the left flap. So you're gonna cut a piece of paper. Remember, remember this is all um, craft cardstock seven and a half inches tall by 11 inches wide and you are going to score it at a half an inch on this left side then you're going to fold and burnish miter the corners And then you're going to place your score tape, your score tape back on this little flap. And you are going to place it, here's our one inch score mark. I'm gonna pull that over. Again, you're going to make a line half an inch from this edge right here, half an inch and you are going to place that right there. But before you do that, you are going to score over here because we are going to fold this over and make a little pocket that's gonna show up on the back on the other side. So you get that lined up and then you see where, here's the fold for this flap. So you need to make sure that your, there's my pencil, that you are clearing that flap. So I'm going to just, here's, here's the fold mark right here. Oops. You can see that line where it's, that's about right there. That's where it's folding. So I'm going to make my mark just to the left of it. Give it some clearance and put that in my scoreboard. And that is coming out to about eight and three quarters. So go ahead and score that at eight and three quarters. And then you're going to fold and burnish this. And what that gives you is a little on the inside of this flap, you're going to have this little pocket. So you're going to glue down 
the edges on two sides. So we have a little pocket back in here. Okay, so I put this left lap in at this half inch mark that I drew, and this has been folded over. So when you open this up, you have this little flap. I put my uh, 1 8 inch score tape. So I'm just gonna remove that and close this up. So now we have a little pocket insert on this back flap. So we have our right flap and our left flap. So they're going to be like this. If you have any overhang, looks like I got a little overhang here, you can put it in the trimmer to make sure everything is nice and even. But if it's all craft card stock, you're probably not going to notice that little bit of overhang. So we got our right and left flaps in. So now we're going to create a left front flap. Now this one is going to be nine. You're going to cut a piece of craft cardstock nine and a half inches wide by six and a half inches tall. And you're going to put it in your scoreboard with a nine and a half inch on top. And you're going to score that at three, I believe, yeah, three quarters of an inch. And then you will fold and burnish this score line. And then you're going to find the center of this paper. So this is six and a half inches. So that would be three and a quarter three and a quarter. That's the center of this paper. You are going to put score tape on the back of this three quarter of an inch flap. And what you're going to do is you're going to apply this to the center of this left flap we just put in. So this was seven and a half inches tall you're going to find the center of this, this flap, which is three and one quarter inches up. So that's the center of this flap. And you're going to put the center of this flap, you're going to put it right on top, right there and center this flap. So it should basically line up um, pretty well over here. But before you do that, before you put this down, I used my Martha Stewart punch to do this edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. So I got my, my edge punched, and then, so we're gonna line up our centers. Center, center, and get it right on that fold line of the bottom left flap, and then just pull the score tape. Oops, not quite centered there. Now you have this flap in. Now we're going to make our right front, right front flap. You're going to cut a piece of craft cardstock eight and a half inches wide, again by six and a half inches tall. Put it in your scoreboard with the eight and a half inch on the top. And then you're going to score this at seven and three quarters. I've got some sticky stuff in my score. Seven and three quarters. 
Bold and Burnish. And this is going to be fitting in around here, but first what you're going to do is you're going to use that Martha Stewart punch if you have it. If you don't have it, you can just use something else or use um, a, a corner round or something just to soften these edges. So I'm going to go ahead and use my scallop punch here, and then I'll be right back. So I went ahead and applied my scallop punch to this, this edge here. Here is my three quarter of an inch flap. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put this up so you clear the scallops, the punch, if you do choose the punch. So if you, it's going to be what? About doo -doo, about a half an inch in and you're just going to apply it around like that. with your score tape, and then this one, you will have the scallop on that side. So it's going to be like this. And we're gonna be adding pole ribbons here too, because uh, it does kind of get confusing, pole ribbons. So I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape on the back of here and pull it. And then we'll do our, we have one other flap we need to do. So our last flap, which is going to go on the left side, you're going to cut a piece of craft cardstock six and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide. And you will put it in the scoreboard and score at, I believe I just said it half an inch. Yeah, half an inch. Fold and burnish. Now this piece, you're gonna open up this, this right front, front flap, you're gonna open this up. This is actually going to be adhered right here. It should be the same height as this flap. And before you do that, you if you have your, your um, punch, you're going to apply the punch on this edging too. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna apply the punch and then I'll be back. So I got my scallop punch, put that edge in there. This is going to be adhered right on this fold line here and it should be the same height. So get that and then pull. And then you have that. Now we're going to have, we have a pocket that we're gonna put here and then we have a pocket, a diagonal pocket that we're gonna put on this page. So then we'll be done with the, the basic construction. So now you're going to make your diagonal pocket. You're going to cut a piece of craft card stock seven inches tall by seven and three quarter inches wide. You're going to put that seven and three quarter inch um, side here, and you're going to score at seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and you're gonna flip it and you're going to score at six and a half. And then we are going to fold and burnish. Then just to cut your diagonal pocket, you can have your, um, these two flaps folded in. And what you're going to do is just draw a line from this point, this point up here, down to this point down here, 
or just put it, and you can put it in your paper trimmer. You don't have to draw the line. Just find that point there and find the point here. Make sure you get it straight. There's that point, that point, and So now you have your diagonal pocket. And this diagonal pocket is going to go on this right front flap. So you're going to miter the corner here. Where's my scissors? And then you're going to miter this edge too. So this doesn't stick out. I need to miter it a little bit more. And then just put your score tape on these flaps. Oh, got to miter it up here too. It's a triangle. It's got three sides, so you got to miter all of those three sides. Okay. So then this is just going to be fitting right here it should fit perfectly right there so you're going to put it to the edge of this flap the right flap all the way to the bottom and to down here to this point should be in the corner down can you see this point should be in the corner down here like that so i'm going to go ahead and put my score tape on and put this pocket in For your last pocket, you're going to cut a piece of craft cardstock three and a quarter inches tall by three and a half inches wide. Now you're going to put it, let's see, we want to score it down here, so we're going to put it at the three and a quarter inch side up, and we're going to score it at at two and three quarters. Go ahead and fold that. That's going to be the bottom part of our pocket. Now for the, the sides of the pocket, we're going to be scoring them. You can start off with half an inch here. So we've got the three and a half inch on top. You can score it a half an inch. Don't score the other side because you have to fit this to your flap. Now, if you is all because I, if you do this punch, you want to make sure you get the right size. So I'm going to put this because this this edge is going to be right on top of the flap with this edge, and then I'm going to see where I want to make my next score mark. So I want it, I want my scallop to show, so I am going to make it about right there. That's where I'm going to put my score mark, which is basically, what is that? that I'll do it right here. It's two and three quarters plus one. You measure yours and just kind of get as close as you can to, to that line, that tick mark. So then you fold and burnish all these. And let's make sure we got our pocket right. So once I fold and burnish those two sides, I just place it here to make sure that's about what, what I want. And that's about right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and miter these down here. Take out the bulk on those edges and then miter the top corners too. So it's going to sit like this. And I 
I guess I could have made it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, but that's, that's good. Um, you can make yours a little bit wider if you like. So I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape down and get this last pocket in. Did, did I do something? Um, it's, oh yes, I made a little notch right in the center. So you can use your envelope punch to go right in the center, or you can use a circle punch. So I think I'll use my envelope punch because that's what I've been using. And I'm just going to center it right in the center of my don't even know what this is a two ooh, I gotta find the center of this and then I'll I'll punch it so I found the center of my pocket so if you want to use your um, circle punch you can I'm going to use this envelope punch and you just basically slide that dot right in the center right there and you, you can see where it's going in and then just punch. So there I have my my little punch right in the center. So I'm going to put my score tape on here and attach this pocket. Whenever I put in pockets, I always do the bottom edge first, and then I apply um, scotch tape. So that's what I'm going to do, and that just so everything can slide in and not get hooked on that lip. Uh, I'm using my itty bitty score tape just because I don't want to use my wider score tape for this demo. Waste, waste it. So I'm going to you know, get my score tape on all, all three sides. But yeah, whenever you do a pocket, always place the bottom, the bottom in first. So get that in. Pull that tape. And then you just pull the pocket down and get your scotch tape. Get your scotch tape. Put it over that lip, that half inch lip. And then you can go ahead and pull the score tape on either side and put in your pocket. But that way, when you put anything in here, it's not gonna hit that lip. It just slides right in. So that's just do that for all your pockets. So we're finished with the basic construction. Now we need to add ribbon um, and magnets before we put on, on our designer paper. So for your magnets, there's only, I've counted, there's only one place you have magnets on panel two. So you're gonna put your magnets behind this first flap and you're going to put them at the top one at the top and one at the bottom, half an inch, at least a half an inch in, half an inch up, half an inch in, and half an inch up. And then, you know, go ahead and put your transfer magnets on top of them, and then just press and transfer over. If they will transfer. Come on, transfer over. I got one to transfer. Come on, transfer. There. Okay, make sure they're yeah, right there. So those magnets have transferred over. And let me cut this off. So there. So we got our magnets in here. Now, with this flap too, the other thing you want to do before you add your designer paper is I put a pull because you do not want to be pulling on this while you're opening it. Use a pull tab. So you're going to, I just made a bunch of these from my ribbon that I have in my stash. For mine, I used this gold ribbon that I had in my stash. 
I'm just using this brown for demonstration purposes, but this is, this is, I like the thickness of this one. And I don't know, I just, I like this kind of a ribbon. You're going to put it around in the middle and then just adhere it down. Um, where's my, I don't have, I don't want to use my good score tape, um, but I will just to show you guys. You're just going to, usually I glue it, I glue it and then adhere it with some score tape too so it doesn't move. Make sure you have room, you leave room for your designer paper right here so we don't see the edge of this. So that's gonna be your pull ribbon for um, this flap. Let's see, anything else? I'm just looking at what we need to do. We bring in the folio. So we have this flap that we just put in. We've got the magnets put in. So one up here, one down here. We've got our pocket. Oh yes, I put um, I. I didn't want to put magnets down in here, so what I ended up doing was putting a ribbon under, oh, <laughs> yes, under, before, yeah. So I put a, a ribbon right here on this diagonal pocket. So let me get that. Okay, so for this ribbon, I used a real sheer ribbon that was easy to tie. I used this, which I just got at Michael's. No, I got it at Joann's. It doesn't matter, they have them at both. It's, it's real sheer, it's easy to tie. Easy to tie in the bow. I got glue all over me. I'm just using this one for demonstration purposes. It's really nice, it's pink. I hate to waste it, but um, I don't have any more of the other one. You're gonna cut two pieces about 10 inches long. This first piece that you're gonna put right on top of this diagonal pocket, you're going to put it three and three quarter inches up from the very bottom. So from the bottom here to up here, it's three and three quarter inches. So from all the way from the bottom of, of your base down here, three and three quarters inches up. Put a tick mark there and on this, this flap, the one that we originally built, you're going to also put a mark at three and three quarter inches right there. So that's going to tell us where we're going to put our ribbon. So you're going to adhere the edge of the ribbon right there Let's get a little bit of score tape. Just gonna put it right there. And just put that there. And then I usually put some more tape to make sure it doesn't move on top. Um, and then on the back side of this, you're going to be applying this one. So let's bring this around. So you're going to be applying this one to the back side on this one inch flap. That's where you're going to be putting it. And you have your little tick mark so you know where to put it. So let me get my score tape on this one. Right there. Make sure you don't put it over the flap. You don't want it to hang over the flap. And that is where this back ribbon is going to go. And then um, make sure they do line up. So now that you got that one, make sure you line this up with 
the front one. So there, so now you have your two ribbons. So that, those are going to keep everything closed. So we got that, then, then let's see, what else do we have? Lots of ribbons on this one. So we got our two ribbons done. Now we need to pull, put a pull ribbon tab right here on this, this flap. So we're going, and on the next one right here. So let's get those put in. So on this flap, we're gonna put, and I make a bunch of these and then just kind of put some my glue in there and then oop, let them dry. Okay, so for this ribbon, um, pull tab, it's going to go under this first flap that ha is holding the diagonal pocket. It's going to be centered underneath this other ribbon that you just put on, and it's going to be adhered to the back side of this flap, right under, so it's right in the center of this ribbon. So just kind of get it positioned to where you like it. It just needs to stick out just a little bit. Make sure I got it. Yes. Yes, so once this is pulled away, you're gonna see this. And it's centered with that. So I'm just going to kind of stick it down right here. Again, I usually use glue and tape just to secure it. So that will be there. So this is going to be like this. And then, let me get rid of this ribbon. You open this up and you have this flap. Now this flap needs one of those also. Here's another one of my ribbons that is drying. That is going to be going, did I put it under or on top? I guess it doesn't really matter how I put it on top, but it can go under, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that they're all centered with each other. So this one is going to be right next to the other one like that and they're all centered with this lighter ribbon so that way once you open this one you'll go oh there's another tab so i need to open this one so let me put some tape down on this and this is just so um whoever you give this to they go is there do i it tells them you need to lift this because there's another page because it will get confusing. So now you have these three ribbons. You have this first ribbon that's going to tie with this back ribbon to tie this whole thing up like that. You're going to make a little bow. You're going to untie it. And then you're going to have this darker, thicker ribbon and you're going to open that. And then you see another tag, another ribbon, so you're going to open that. Then you come to this inside flap. You need to put another ribbon here. So let me see how I, how I did that one over on this one. So here was the lighter ribbon, this ribbon, this ribbon, and now we get to the inside, and we're going to have, ah, oh, that's what I did. I go, okay. I cut a piece of paper and put the ribbon so it doesn't hit the spine here or the, this. So I kind of, before I put this paper on, I slipped it under this paper. So this is like a half an inch. So it's a half an inch back. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to apply the ribbon right now until we um, cover it. I'm going to put half an inch and I'll put ribbon. And this ribbon is going to be in the center, so somewhere around here. That way I don't forget, because once I put the paper down here, if I forget the ribbon, I'll have to lift up the paper and then stick the ribbon in. So then you'll have a ribbon here to open this up. I think we got our ribbons and our magnets. And there is actually two more pockets that I forgot because they're easy to forget. You open this. Did we put this ribbon on? Did we put this ribbon on? I don't even remember. Let's check because this ribbon tells us to open up and then we have these two little flaps. So let me see. No, we didn't. <laughs> Okay, so we have the magnet. We have this ribbon. We have these closure ribbons that are basically keeping everything closed up so it doesn't flop around. Open that up. We have a ribbon here. We have a ribbon here. We're going to have a ribbon here to open this up. Last ribbon. We open this up, we have another, we have this flap. So we're going to put a ribbon right here. So let me get another one of my ribbons that's been drying. It needs, doesn't have to be that long. Um, and it's just going to go center also. You're not gonna see it. And it's going to go, is it going on top? Yes, it's going on top of this flap. So we're going to put a ribbon right here. Make sure it's not in the way of this fold. Keep it back. Let's put our score tape there to hold it. And then we're going to put, remember, always use glue and tape for all these ribbon pulls so they're secure. So I think we got it ribbon pull tab pull tab here and then we come to this flap that we haven't dealt with yet we have two inside flaps in here let me show you here's the diagonal pocket you lift this up and then we have these two fl two flaps and they're held by these button string closures like this. So let's add these two little flaps and then we will be done with the construction of our of panel two. We just need to decorate it. So let's build these. Okay, so now let's just see where we're going to be putting those flaps. So review. We made this one, we got this ribbon pull tab, got our magnets, we got the pull tab here, we're going to open it up, and then we're coming to this inner part. So this is where we're going to be adding two flaps. One up here, and one here. So you're going to cut two pieces, four inches, each is gonna be four, four inches tall by four and three quarter inches wide. And then we're going to score a half an inch. Score in a half an inch with the four inch side up. Half an inch. Half an inch. Fold and burnish those. And then with this bottom edge down here, we're going to be using our scallop punch. So the way these are going to fit in, 
you're going to center it. Here's the center of this page here, and I'll find the center of this. We're gonna have one flap here, and this flap is going to be facing this flap. Now, with the scallop punch, we, we want a little, a little area where um, there's going to be a little bit of yellow reveal in there. So let's see if that scallop punch is gonna take it down. I'm not sure. Might have to score these a little bit different or take a little bit off of the edge here. I tried it with three and three quarters inches tall. And of course, do I remember what I did? No. This, there was too much yellow showing, so I extended it to four inches tall. Maybe I extended it more than four inches tall. I don't know. Let's see if this is four inches tall. Yes, four inches tall. So let me go ahead and use the scallop punch and see if it works. So I went ahead and used the scallop punch and this would go up here. Here's the center of this flap. Here's the center of this, this. That would go there and that goes there. And then we have our little bit of reveal in between. So if you are not using a punch, you may want to decrease the, the height of this because this does take off like a half an inch between the two. So that's the way those are going to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape and get those, those down. Okay, so this is how yours should look. So you have these two. We're going to be closing it with a, a a string button closure, but we can't apply this until we get our designer paper on. So we'll, we'll save that for after when we start decorating. We'll make these and put them on after we get the designer paper on the front. Um, but I think we've got everything. So let's just check. So this is what you should have tie this up so we can make sure we got all our stuff in before we start decorating. You have this little flap. You have a pocket. We have a pull ribbon right here. We pull that. We come to this pull ribbon and you open it up and then we have these two flaps that are going to be held down by this button string closure that we will create once we start decorating them. So that is that. So we have all that. Then we close this. We have our diagonal pocket. Then we untie this and we have a little ribbon pull tab here. We lift this up and it takes us to this page. So we have this page and then we have this page which we also put a ribbon pull tab so we know to pull this one up. And then we have this space with our little pocket that we made by folding the paper over. And then we come to this ribbon pull tab that we have not put in yet because we're going to be putting it a half an inch in so it doesn't stick out and interfere with this um, the closure of this so we're going to be putting this ribbon when we put in our designer paper pull this in my computer just went dead And then we're, we have our pocket that we, we've kind of did the cutout um, and then we will make this insert. So I think we are ready to start the, adding the designer paper. 
Okay, we're ready to start decorating. So this is what we're going to be starting with, this back panel. This is already attached to the folio, but this is what you've made. Remember this, we started off with this back pocket and then we did the envelope punch here. That, so we're opening up everything and we're getting to this back part where everything was built on. So what you're gonna start with is the solid green. This solid green is from the patterns and solids. This is about all I have left. You're going to cut a strip eight and three quarter inches wide by three quarter inches tall. Now that's the measurement I get for measuring from flap to flap. So you might wanna measure yours to make sure that's the same one you get. That's what I'm getting. And then we're going to try the envelope punch. I think we're going to punch it at one and one eighth. So I'm gonna put this in here. It's gonna be around that. It's gonna be between one and one eighth and one and a quarter. That would be there, and that would be there. That looks like it's, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna cut this off so I can show you. Okay, so this is what I cut, and it kinda goes right there. You make sure you ink the edges. You may have to experiment with um, how much to bring this in. This is, I cut it one and one eighth. It may be more, it may be less. Experiment with some scrap paper. It's not very much. So that would go there. The rest is going to be the 12 by 12 patterns and solids, the stripe. So this stripe. And you're going to have it the same width go basically all the way to the bottom. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom because we're gonna have this tuck spot, tuck spot down here. So it doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. And this is from this paper from the 12 by 12. And I just basically cut the welcome down here. I started off with the W, got little one pretty much kind of in the center, then welcome and little one. So I just basically put this and then went to here. So eight and three quarter inches. And that goes down at the bottom. And that's, I only glued it at the edges at the bottom just to make a little tuck spot where I have one of our little Pooh Bear cards tucked in. So that's it for the back panel. And then you have these two side flaps. So this side flap is you're going to be cutting this piece of paper, which is, oh, I didn't adhere it all the way down. This is from the eight by eight. Any. This is from the 8x8 collection. I cut this piece from the 8x8 collection. This is five and a quarter inches, and I just centered it on, on this flap. So I just centered it. And then on either side of it, I put the brown dotted paper from the 12 by 12 collection and I just filled in whatever was left and it looks like it's one and three quarter inches and this should be one and three quarter inches also on each side. So this paper is, is in the center, it's centered. Remember it's from the eight by eight collection, this paper, it is five and a quarter inches, and then you use the brown dotted paper 
um, and it's going to be a, about one and three quarter inches. You measure yours. And everything, I believe, is seven and not quite seven and a half, seven and three eighths. But you measure yours. Make sure you ink all these pages, all these pieces before you glue them down. So that's this flap. Now this one is the brown, on this flap, this is the brown paper from the 12 by 12, it's a 12 by 12 paper. And I just filled this whole area with this paper. And I slipped it in under our little pocket that we made. Oops, you can't see. And I slipped it underneath this pocket. The other thing that you can do is not glue this pocket down and then slip it in. But since we already glued the pocket down, I just slipped it in there. I may have had to angle it a little bit to get it in there. Um, but that's what I did. And this paper here is whatever's on this flap is just the same corresponding flower paper that's on this flap from the 8x8 collection. And obviously, I used my marker. If you're doing the gender neutral one, you can see the difference between the pink, the pink one here, and the one where the pink has been tapped down with that alcohol marker. So those are the two inside flaps. Then you close this flap and this is from the eight, I, that is the 12 by 12. That is the 12 by 12 paper. And what I did with this one, let me bring out the one that we made. So we got, got um, where are we? So we got this flap, this flap, got this flap, we've done this flap, we've done this flap, and then we fold this flap over and we get to this page. So here is where we have that half inch strip. So here, this half inch strip is just going to be covered with that striped paper again from the patterns and solids, the green stripe from the patterns and solids. And what I also did is I put a half an inch strip on this side. So this is going to be a half an inch strip here with the green stripe. And remember, let me put some paper here and we're gonna do the ribbon. So you're gonna have a half inch green stripe on this side, half inch green stripe on this side. So I put in two holders. <laughs> this isn't the green stripe. I don't have any more green stripe, but I'm putting in this green paper here, half, a, half an inch stripe here, half an inch stripe here. And remember we said we we're gonna add a ribbon here before we put the paper down. So this ribbon, here's my ribbon that I made. We're going to put it here and you want it so this ribbon does not interfere with the closure. So you're just going to have it sticking a little bit into that half an inch part right here. So I'm going to put that down here. Get some, I hate to keep using my score tape. <sighs> But I'll just put that down. Remember, I always put a glue end and tape down for my ribbons to make sure they stay. So I'll put, just put my score tape down there to hold it. So this is going to be our, our ribbon um, tab to open this flap. Now for this 
we are going to be cutting from the 12 by 12, the same paper. This is the 12 by 12. Now, since my album is for my um, daughter's son, newborn son, I wanted to cut out pieces that were more gender neutral. So the way I cut it, you can see here, I cut it with the sweater, the brown sweater, this little suit with the bow tie, and then I went into this piece that I colored the pink in here. I colored the pink in all of these. So these pretty much look more gender neutral to me. So I started right, if you want to make a little boy, I started right here at this point and I measured off and went to about this point. And this is going to be about eight inches, about eight inches, a little bit more than eight inches, eight and one eighth. So just kind of measure where you eight and one eighth, and then just cut it. And then you're going to go seven and three eighths down this um, tall wise, height wise. And then you're just going to use your marker if you're doing gender neutral, your alcohol marker. And you're going to, here it is without all the pink tapped out. Here it is with all the pink tapped out. Looks pretty gender neutral. I don't know if you can see that. Don't really see any pink at all. So here we have that little ribbon that we just put in. It's laying in that half inch striped paper. And then this is our pull tab for here, our ribbon pull tab. So we have this part done. We have these two flaps done. We have this one done. We have our ribbon put in there. We didn't forget that. And then you're gonna close this. And now we are going to be decorating this flap, this left flap. So this left flap, all I did was I used the, the paper from the eight by eight, this little brown polka dot paper. This is how wide? It is da -da, basically three quarters of an inch wide here, three quarters of an inch wide here, and then I added the the star paper. This is from the 12 by 12, the star paper here. And that's all I did here. So three quarters of an inch of the brown paper, star paper, three quarters of an inch of the brown dot paper, brown dot paper, and then fill it in with the, the star paper from the 12 by 12. I left a little bit of reveal in between. You don't have to. I just like the look of that. And then this is our six and a half inch flap. This one I used, you're going to go to the eight by eight pack and you're gonna get this paper has this pattern on the back. This is what I used. So what I did is I cut, because I wanted to use this eight by eight on the back. So that's why I added this, this green piece in the middle. So I basically cut this in half. So it's, each piece is four inches, because this is eight inches. And then I plopped one on this side and one on this side. And obviously everything is cut to like six and three eighths inches tall. This has a lot of pink in it. So I used that alcohol marker and you can see what a difference it made for this page. 
you can see that difference. So this looks very gender neutral. This looks pink, gender neutral. Our boy. So that's what I did. I just cut this right at four inches and put it on each side and then whatever was left in between, and that's what you could do um, since this whole thing was, I need this to fit here. So cut it in half, put one, one four inch piece on this side, cut one four inch piece on this side, and whatever you have left in the middle, fill it with the, the green stripe paper. So we finished the designer paper on this page. So we're going to flip this page over and this brings us to our front page. Move this over. So this is where we have our diagonal pocket. So the diagonal pocket is just covered with um, the brown dotted paper from the 12 by 12. And then this paper that goes behind it is from the 8x8 collection. It's this one. And I just cut it and fit the whole thing in there. So you cut it to size and, you, and put that in there. Make sure you ink the edges of your paper. So you got that and that. And then you open up this. And then we come, so this is underneath this diagonal pocket page. We come to this. Ooh, I forgot this. We made a belly band. Well, I made a belly band. We forgot to put the belly band in. So let's just put this belly band in. Um, let me get the measurements and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the belly band, you're going to cut a piece of um, craft cardstock seven and a half inches tall, two and a quarter inches wide. You will score half an inch on top, half an inch on bottom, fold those over, find the center of this flap, mark the center, top and bottom, find the center of your belly band, and then you're just going to adhere that here and here. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So belly band is attached and this is how you're going to decorate it. So for the belly band itself, right here, you are going to be using this green star paper from the 12 by 12. Green star paper from the 12 by 12. For underneath the belly band, you are going to be using the eight by eight paper. This one with the little baby rattles. And this is going to just slide under there and just cut it to size. And that's gonna just slide under there. So that's the eight by eight. So we got this, the belly band, 12 by 12 green star paper. Underneath, you're gonna slide in um, from the eight by eight baby rattle. So that's done. For this front pocket, for this front pocket, you are using a piece of the solid green that's going to be inserted into the pocket. And then for this little, the little um, pocket here, you're going to be using this paper. This is also from the eight by eight. You're gonna cut a piece that fits here. And what I did with this is I tapped down the pink also with the alcohol market marker. So you're gonna be able to see the difference with the pink gone and just not tap down. There's the difference. Not real noticeable here, but you're going to see it when we get to these inside flaps. It's a little bit more noticeable. 
So we got this, this, this. You open up this flap. This is just the eight. This is from the 12 by 12. This is the 12 by 12 baby rattle paper. And not that it makes any difference, but I never cut off. I always make sure I don't cut off the heads of any of my little rabbit rattles. It, I just don't like the look of decapitating them. So I just cut my paper where I make sure the baby's heads aren't going to be cut off. Just, just me. Same thing with here. I added the paper so none of the baby rattle, baby rattle head, uh, bunny heads were decapitated. So we got those. This, this. Now we're just going to be working on this. So you're going to start by adding the green star paper in between these two flaps. This is from the 12 by 12 collection. Make sure you ink the edges and then add that there. Now for these flaps, you are first going to add this striped paper from the 12 by 12 collection. What I did first was I added a thin strip of solid yellow that is like a quarter of an inch Yeah, a little less than a quarter of an inch. I just wanted a little, a little thin stripe of the solid yellow down here. And that's what I did. Solid yellow, about a quarter of an inch solid yellow. And then I, I filled it in with the striped paper. Again, if you're doing the gender neutral, you tap down the pink. Here you can see the difference hopefully from the tap down, not tap down. More pink, more golden orange. So that was what I did there. Once you do those, once you add this paper, then we're going to be adding our little um, button tie closures. So I will show you how to do that um, shortly. And I'll, um, I'll make another video on how to do that. So I'm going to show you how to make these button tie closures. You probably all know how to make it, make them, but just in case. So what you're going to do is find the center of your pocket. I'm just going to say it's here. I measure everything, but for, for demonstration purposes, that's going to be our center. Now, if you have a hole punch, this is the three quarters of an inch. Here's 65 pound craft cardstock. For each button, I'm going to cut out three circles. Three circles. And then I'm going to glue them together to make a strong circle. So use your glue, make sure you get the edges real well because you want it to adhere down. I kind of squish it around. Do your third one. Move it around and squish it down. Yep. And then I would use my ink inker. I would dab some antique linen around here too. Just makes it look so much nicer. It gives it a rich look to it like that. Then you're going to get if this was three quarters of an inch, I'm using my next size down. I have a five eighths of an inch punch. 
I'm going to punch out my star. This is from the 12 by 12 punch out the star. I'm going to ink that also all the way around the edges. It just makes it look so much nicer. And then I'm going to glue this on the center of the three that we just put together. And then you're going to center it and let it dry. If you have a pokey tool, or anything that's sharp and you can go down with, you're going to make a hole right in the center with your pokey tool. Of course, where's my pokey? Here's my pokey tool. So I'm going to try to center it, put it in my mat. Let's see, try to get it centered. I never get it perfect, but it's going to be about right there about right and then I just go all the way through you should let these dry before you use your pokey tool mine are still kind of wet um, but let them dry it's much easier to work with and push it all the way through Then the placement of these, you're going to have it, here's your, your quarter inch solid. You're going to have it so, um, obviously it's lined up in the center, the hole is lined up with the center, and you're going to have it just above that line, that solid yellow. So I'll put my pencil mark there and put my oops I'll do that one there and then this one since they might be a little bit different put that one there so that's where i'm going to put my pokey tool get this and put that right there and put it right here Then you're going to get some small brads, whichever color you like. I'm just going to pull some, um, and you're going to put it through the circle, and then you're going to put it through this hole that you just made in the flap, and then you're going to Pull those wings out and then you can flatten them you can flatten it with your bone folder too just get those wings flat same thing on this side get a brad and put it through the hole put it through this hole Flatten out the wings. Use your bone folder or this instrument if you have it to flatten out those wings. And I usually put a piece of tape on the back too. Just some black construction tape if you have it would be good. Okay, so we got those in, and then you're going to get your thread. Here is mine. I have this lax, wax linen thread. I really like it. It's five ply. It's wax linen thread, five ply from Linco. 
So let's just get out um, the brow hole. I like it because it sticks to itself. It doesn't unravel. It's sturdy and strong. It's never gonna tear. So I am just gonna cut one, two, very generous three. We're going to tie it to the bottom one. So I'm going to start on the top and tie it once here. And this thread is, is thick enough that it lifts the button so it's easy to wrap the thread on this thread around it again. And then we're going to bring it up to the top, which is where the thread, this string is going to be going. And we're going to tie it twice. One. And it's, like I said, a square knot. It's going to stick to itself so it won't be coming undone. Two, and then you're going to trip off, trip off, trim off that tail. Small scissors here and just trim that off. Oops. I can't see. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Trim that off. Okay. And then you're just going to go one. I like to do a figure of eight, two, and three. And then you have some extra here. If you got the bundle from us, you got some charms, so you can add a charm um, down here. Real easy to add the char charm. Some people don't add anything and they just cut, cut it, which is fine also. Some people add beads. I don't like adding beads because they add a lot of bulk to the inside. So that's it for this button tie closure. And um, obviously this is for demonstration purposes. That's not exactly how it looks, but I think you guys get the idea. So let's see. Did we do decorate everything? We haven't de we decorated this. Yes, we did. Um, let's just have a look and see what if there's anything left. Pull out this We're on panel two. Lots of stuff here. Let's see, put this back together again. I just made some inserts to just a little bit of um, inserts. This is from the, obviously the eight by eight baby rattle with a little stripe of the, of the brown dots. I made one for there. This is one of our Winnie the Pooh journaling cards. I just kind of put that in there too. Here is a little tag, and this is using um, the Winnie the Pooh journaling card, too, that you can get from us. And this little tag measures two and a quarter inch by five and three quarters. Obviously, you can make yours taller if you like. And then I just added a little, a little green stripe up here for to break up this this pattern here and then same thing I added some green down here in here and then add the little journaling bit right in the center back here I thought that was really cute so that fits in here and then here I just used um, my die which has the scallop die and I have a stitch circle punch and added this I think we have this that we're selling to you can it's 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 basically a freebie I, I think I threw it in there that has this Winnie the Pooh saying and I just put that right there this scallop die is one and um, a half inches and my circle die is a little bit less than one and a half inches so that is done. This is from the ephemera, the Winnie the Pooh ephemera. I just cut it out and inked it. 
and then added this scallop circle, this solid green circle. And this is about two and almost two and um, three eighths inch diameter circle. And I just put Winnie the Pooh and Piglet on top of it. And you can see that they're, they've been inked. Everything's been inked. And there's that piece there. Let's see, anything else we got in here? This, oh, I added Winnie the Pooh from the ephemera also. Just cut him out, inked him, and put him like he's looking up. I thought that was cute for this pocket. And then this just closes. And there's that, I, I picked this little rabbit from the, the charms that Julie sends that, nothing else, got that. Open up this, these, nothing here. These are good for four by sixes. We got this space here, open this up. Got a little tuck spot. You can put one of the Winnie the Pooh um, postcards. Here's a Winnie the Pooh postcard. You can put that in there. Open this up. And then we have this tuck spot. You can use another Winnie the Pooh journaling cards. And the only other thing to make is a booklet that fits in your back pocket, but you can't do that until we attach it to the, to the folio itself. So that's gonna be the next thing. We're going to go ahead and attach what we made to the folio itself. So now we are, this is the thing we've been making. We are going to be attaching this to our folio. So we have those one inch wings, remember? So here's the back of our panel. This should be green stripes, half an inch green stripe here, half an inch green stripe here. What you're going to do is add score tape on these one inch flaps. Slather it, cover it end to end with score tape, and then just put a bead of strong adhesive glue. I use Beacons 3-in-1 um, to give it extra strength. You're only gluing the flaps down. You, This is not being glued down. Otherwise, you would have, you'll, you'll have no pocket. So you're gonna glue those flaps down glue or adhere them with some um, score tape. And then you're going to get another strip of the 12 by 12 green stripe paper. Since I have none, I'm just using this one as a stand-in. And you're going to cut a piece that will fit inside. It's gonna fit inside those flaps. You're going to put it down inside those flaps like that. So it will be going down inside those flaps. It's hard to do, but you get the idea, I hope. So you're gonna push that down till it's, you just have a little bit of reveal at the top, but it should, you cut it to fit in between those two flaps. And that's going to be the top part here. And then you'll have this area for your booklet. So this whole area is going to be for your booklet. So here it is on the real one. Let's get to the back. So here it is. Let me take out the booklet. If you can see it there, the flaps have been adhered down. You can see one of the flaps here and one of the flaps way over here. And then I inserted the green stripe paper inside. So now we have our pocket. 
So we have our pocket for our booklet. And the booklet I made goes in like this. I used, I made it the width that would go in and how deep it would go in. I just made it to the right size to fit it in there. Obviously you gotta join two pieces together because it's pretty big. And then I just decorated with um, the eight by eight. This is from the 12 by 12 collection, the flowers, tap down the pink, use the, the brown um, dotted paper from the 12 by 12. And this is, ew, what is this? This is just solid, the solid brown. I have lots of the solid brown left over because I didn't use any of the balloon paper. So I had lots of the solid brown that was behind the balloons. And then I thought I needed something so people would know this was a pullout. So I made a half circle punch, a little half circle punch right here, put it there. And then on the back side of the booklet before I put on this backing paper, I put a little ribbon. And that just makes it easier to pull out with the ribbon. You could just pull it out like with your thumb, go, go like that, but I just like the idea of having a ribbon to pull out. So that is basically it for panel two. If you watch everything carefully, it, sh it should make sense. Um, so now we're going to be going on to panel one, two, panel three.